A year ago, Greta Thunberg was still pretty unknown. People in Stockholm might have seen her sitting outside the Swedish parliament with a sign that read, School Strike for Climate. But her idea caught on. Children in different countries, including this one, started protests on Fridays. Today, demonstrations and walkouts are taking place in more than 150 countries ahead of discussions at the UN General Assembly on Monday. We can talk now about protests and policy with Lord Stern, author of the landmark 2006 Stern Review on the Economics of Climate Change. He's on the steering committee for Monday's UN Climate Action Summit and has a report out today on the risks of climate change to lives and livelihoods. And Sarah Lunnan, who's a former Green Party councillor, now a coordinator for the Extinction Rebellion campaign group. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning, Michelle. Uh, Sarah Lunnan, first, do you think you are achieving something with Extinction Rebellion that, that you couldn't or didn't manage to while you were in local government for the Green Party? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, Extinction Rebellion and its technique of mass disruption has absolutely put climate change and the environmental extinction on the agenda and people are now talking about about it. That's why I'm on the programme today, because of the action we've taken. You weren't particularly interested in me as a local Green Party councillor, but you do want to talk to me now. You've, so, yeah, yeah, we have changed the conversation. Changed the conversation, but what have you achieved in terms of specifics, policy change? Uh, so we haven't achieved our three demands yet, which is to tell the truth, zero carbon by 2025 and a national citizens' assembly on how we get there. Um, but those those are being discussed. We are talking about it. Uh, people are beginning to realise the enormity, the terrifying truth of what we face and what faces our children. Um, and, and if we take a moment to think about it, to actually think about what a mass extinction means, what the loss of life on Earth means, then we begin to realise what action we do need. So it, we're not there yet. We're going to go out again on October the 7th. We're going to carry on demanding real action from the media and from our polit politicians until we achieve it. Lord Stern, are they, are they right, Extinction Rebellion, to talk in terms of mass extinction? There is a very serious risk of uh, major loss of life. Um, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has been going for 30 years now, and each time they publish a report, it looks worse. And we've just published a, a report from the LSE, uh, working with Columbia University and Potsdam Climate Change Institute, showing just how big uh, those risks are becoming. Each time, uh, we seem to be underestimating, and now there's uh, a real risk that the uh, Western Antarctic ice sheet is already destabilizing and that the Amazon forest is approaching the uh, levels of loss which could lead to tipping points. And those are really big effects which uh, would have sea level rise which would move hundreds of millions of people. You'd see the Amazon, the lungs of the world, uh, collapse into savannah if it went uh, uh, very far further in and, terms of loss. These are huge, huge risks. And, and in terms of how you combat them, how you, how you control them, zero carbon by 2025, one of those key demands of Extinction Rebellion, would, would that sufficiently address what, what, you are, uh, what you are talking about? Well, the most recent IPCC report, and this is the scientists, of course, of the world speaking in October last year, said that to hold to 1.5 degrees centigrade, we had to go net zero as a world by 2050. And 1.5 degrees centigrade is a prudent target. It is already, uh, of course, worrying levels. But zero by 2050 is what the uh, science is asking us, telling us that we have to do uh, by 2050. And I think that's a wise target. And we should note that the UK government in June did commit to uh, zero by 2050 in the UK. Yeah. Can I can I add there, though, that gives us a 50-50 chance of keeping to 1.5 degrees. So we're going to bet everything on a 50-50 chance. That's everything we cherish in this world. We're going to take a 50-50 chance on achieving it. And that's with the unicorns of carbon capture and storage coming over the horizon and saving us. That technology does not exist. So we are taking a massive gamble on doing this. Lord Stern? I think what we have to uh, look to is what we can actually do and how we do it. And that's the most important thing to concentrate on now. We've got to drive past coal, and that will be a big issue at 
the uh, summit on Monday. We've got to keep internal combustion engine cars out of our cities. We've got to follow Denmark and India in banning the sale of internal combustion engine cars by uh, 2030. We've got to have strong uh, carbon prices. If we do all these things, we have cities where we can move and breathe. We have ecosystems which are robust and fruitful. We've got to restore degraded land. India has announced a, a big uh, program on that. So we have to look directly at what we can do and how we do it. That's the practical challenge. And as we engage with it, we'll see how attractive this alternative system uh, of growth uh, and uh, living standards. It will be a much different way of doing things. Lord Stern, Sarah Lunnan, thank you both.